Started my life was kind of rough, I had an awful battle. The doctor set my parents down and said my life was fragile. Perspective is the game, I guarantee the name. Just put your head down, do the work, and everything will change. Sipping tea, help it feels, yeah, that's what I wanted. Being patient, hell, the tricky, you have to be an honest. Hey, teamwork, Gary V, puts in positivity. Morning, 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 morning. It is Thursday. June 25th, and this is Tea with Gary V. Big shout out to everybody in the comments. Uh, good morning, Tammy J, Jorge, Mike Swagger, what's good? Terrell Hope in the building, Lucia, Lizette, what's good? Terrell Hope, great to see you. KJ Schreeman in the building. Big shout out to Twitch, and to Facebook, and to Periscope, and to LinkedIn, and to Instagram. Everybody, great to see you, 24 seven fishings in the building. Before we start, go right up to the URL, Go right up to the URL right now and share it. Share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook. Please take a screenshot and put in your Instagram stories. Let's get people on the Dirty Tea with Tea with Gary V. And I'm excited about this episode, as you can tell by the energy. So let's get right into it. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Tom Brown, what's good? What's good? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you? Man, I'm doing excellent. I can't complain. Where are you at? L.A. Thanks for, getting up, thanks for getting up early. Yeah, hundred percent. Not usually up this time. Usually going to sleep this time. But. <laughs> yeah, bet. Well, it's great to see you, man. What can I answer for you? you too. I was going to ask you, like, with the success of all the apps like TikTok and everything else, where do you see the music industry going in the future? Like, not just being the traditional record label, but do you think it's possible that like TikTok or any of these apps can be a future record label? I think I think they could, I don't think they will. I think TikTok's more MTV 1985. It's mm-hmm. kind of where all the kids are and then thus whatever music's popping, it pops. I think you've seen what Spotify and, and, and really SoundCloud more than anything has done, which is you don't need a record label to get exposure, right? I think the, mm-hmm. the leverage that the internet gives to the artist versus the distribution, to, it's always a content and distribution game. Mm-hmm. And and the record labels had all the leverage for so long because you couldn't get your music to the world unless you were signed, had a CD or a record, put in a mm-hmm. Sam Goody or a Virgin store, right? And then you gotta get promoted on TRL. Like that was the machine. Now, me and you can go into the studio at 4 a.m. back to your point earlier, usually up, mm-hmm. hit something. I got real fucking cloud out here, put it on my thing, link it to SoundCloud, it gets going. You start making mean culture. You look at you know what 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 uh, what old country road like it's, the game is completely flipped. Look, could they? Sure, they could. More likely, those platforms always want to stay neutral and have everybody come into them because that's even more business. That's distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as they start a label, they alienate other people that are out there. And so TikTok doesn't want to lose Rihanna because they start a label and came up with Shmiana and they compete mm-hmm. for sound, right? So. I, I think it's more about using those platforms and understanding that if I'm an artist, I build as big as I can, have all the leverage, and then have, and I think record labels are gonna have to evolve into things like, they're gonna have to show value. They can't just do distribution. So I think record labels are gonna have to be able to build you. You know, a lot of the way I think about the Vayner machine, like what I deployed against my wine business and how I think about music and film and everything is eventually the only thing that's gonna matter is if somebody can actually get you more awareness because everything else is a commodity. Yeah, hundred percent. Cause it's, it's crazy to see the bump and there's producers and artists that I know that now have real records that never would get a deal before. And they're no, 35 just, years old with a song that's number one on TikTok. This is all I've been yelling about for fucking 15 years. And I, and obviously when TikTok, you know, and musically, and then became TikTok, like I've been screaming about this, and nobody believes it. So few believe it. Definitely not people that are a little further along. Mm-hmm. You know, the people that have no choice believe it. They're like, yeah, well, nobody's to your point. Nobody's gonna sign me. Nobody gives a fuck. I'm 35. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people I worry about are the ones that got a little something going, have signed a deal, are in the game, because they they don't realize that they kind of look at it as like, fuck, I've been grinding out here for 15 years, you know, to just get to this spot, right? You know. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And, and I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Go all in on that, mm-hmm. right? Be, look at Jason Derulio. Yeah, he's 
Ch- good friend of mine. He's like smash, and it's insane. And it makes me so happy for him because he's like mm-hmm. almost like the DJ Khaled of this, right? Khaled mm-hmm. had a real career, yeah. but Snapchat changed his life. Hundred percent. Jason had a real career, but let's not get it twisted. His relevance score has gone through the fucking roof. There's no seventeen year olds that knew who Jason was like that. And mm-hmm. in fucking six months, they love the man. 25 million followers is insane. And now he can like take a step back and really put out a, a track, a record, a fucking drop something, and it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. And a year ago, if he dropped that, it wasn't gonna work. That's just real life. Yeah, it's insane how it changed the game. It's insane. And it will continue to happen. Today it's TikTok. Tomorrow, something called like Slingy Red is gonna come out and it's where like, this is just the culture of youth culture will always be like this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna always be like this. Yeah, I think record labels have forever changed now. And and, and they have to now bring value in a different way. And that's it, that's how I say it. Keep pushing, Tommy, I really appreciate it, man. Everybody follow this man. Yeah, I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, listen, and the game's changing in everything, real estate, like when I think about the power of like being a great communicator and having a machine behind it, if I want to start Vayner Realty, if I want to start Vayner Records, if I want to start Vayner Films, all of those things are going to do better because I've been focused on the thing that actually matters, which is getting fucking people to see it, not get it out into the world. I can put a movie on the fucking internet and put a passcode, you know, kind of like, and be in the game. I don't need fucking theaters. And let me rephrase that. Today you need theaters still. Kind of like I saw the music thing 10 years ago. Now you really don't need it with SoundCloud and TikTok and things that they share. You don't need a label the way they needed it. Now labels have to evolve and bring more value. Same with theaters. You still kind of need it. We don't have that smash movie hit that we all went to the website and just all watched and they tokenized and they didn't let people share codes and like they got their money. But it's coming. Don't get it twisted. It's fucking coming. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Let's go, baby. You're not joking with the goat shirt. My God, Jerry Rice, what is good, man? The legend. It is a pleasure to see you, my friend. Wow, I'm fired up. They got me with that one. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm honored to be on with you. Jerry, you know what's crazy? A lot of people love throwing around goats, but my man, you know, it's funny. In that same draft class, uh, my favorite New York Jet of all time, Al Toon. Uh And and my whole life, my whole life, I would always, like when I was a kid kid, I would always try to debate that Al Toon was up to your class, but my man, you really goaded it out. And I'm, it's a real pleasure. I mean, honestly, it was really easy to, you know, I'm an AFC fan, so it was easy when you were killing it in San Francisco. When you came to the Raiders and did work, and we had some big games, like I was yeah. definitely salty, but now I'm feeling better now that, now that you're retired and doing all that stuff. So it's great to see you. How are you? Hey, Gary, I'm good. Look, I was pissed off because Al Toon and Eddie Brown went before me. I know, my man. <laughs> Trust me, I know that in I know in a very short period of time we took Ken O'Brien and Al Toon before Dan Marino and Jerry Rice. I know exactly my dress. <laughs> Listen, it's a real pleasure to have you here. What's on your mind? Hey, look, man, I just, you know, I have started a new company called Go Feel. Uh, we have four drinks now. It's a healthier drink. And my thing, over the years, I played the game for over 20 years. It was all about what I put in my body. And that gave me the opportunity where I could go on the field and excel. So that's what I'm trying to do uh, with my new energy drink. And it's going to be more e-commerce right now because of everything that's going on with the pandemic and all of that. And Jerry, you know, real quick, I'm sorry to make to, it really I'm, simple. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I don't know if you heard the last thing, but what's funny is in the same way that record labels are different, same thing with retailers. Going direct to consumer is exactly what you should do. Build it up and then have Walmart and Albertsons and Publix and Costco begging you for it instead of you begging them. You're going to get every meeting because of you. I'm sure the buyers at all these big shops are all going to take the Jerry Rice meeting. But <laughs> but what I'd rather you have more than the legendary status as leverage is actual sales to consumers. That's going to carry yeah. even more with them. Hello? I think... Uh, okay. Yeah, I think Gary's okay. internet is uh, cut out, of course. He always has to go outside, <laughs> far away from the router. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, t- I'll text him. 
<laughs> well, it's not me. <laughs> no, it's definitely not you. Oh, it's his computer crashed, he said. <laughs> Great. I'm talking to the legend himself and his computer crashes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a fun fact. Um, I don't know anything about sports, but you were the first athlete that I ever even heard of because my cousin had your San Francisco 49ers jersey on. And really? I, yeah, that's the only, that's all I know. Like, I didn't even know <laughs> any other athletes, and I just saw him wear it, said rice on the back. And I, I was like, who's that? So then I looked it up somehow, and I was like, it was Jerry Rice. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. God, my God, time flew by so fast, man. Yeah. I mean, over the years, you know, playing for 20 years, playing with, Probably the greatest quarterback, you know, with Montana, the greatest uh, coach, God, you know, Bill Walsh, and uh, the greatest owner, uh, Eddie DeBarlo. So we we had a great ride. That's awesome. What do you miss the most? <laughs> you, you know, I I think what I miss the most is the camaraderie, uh, going into a hostile environment. I'm back. Taking that, I'm back. Taking those Sorry about that. Out. Hey, man, look at you back. I'm back. My comp- Listen, this computer's been, uh, Dustin, we have to talk to the team. My computer's been crashing just randomly. So, okay. I mean, that's fine when it's, you know, meetings here and there, but not when we're live with the legend. <laughs> anyway, Jerry, I totally get it. So keep going. What what can I answer for you? Or what's yeah, on your so, mind? You know, uh, you, you really have answered a lot for me because we just want to make it convenient for the consumer. And, you know, and also where they don't uh, pay that big overhead price and all of that. So, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction. Is, 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 it avail- is, it, is it available for everybody right now if they wanted to try it? Is there a website? Uh, just on the Internet. It's, you can go to www.gofield.com and uh, you can order. Uh, we also got apparel uh, coming out. So I'm excited about the whole thing because you know me. Hey, Gary, the thing about me, I do not put my name on just anything. You know, I, I have to really believe in it. And the thing is, I have, you know, pretty much assembled a great team. It's all about teamwork. You know, I didn't I didn't catch 1,549, uh, you know, balls or, you know, uh, 200 touchdowns, 22,895 yards. It's <laughs> all about it. teamwork, man. Listen, and, and I, listen, let me throw something at you that I think is going to really work for you. I think that you should, and by the way, let's get connected after this and we can get on a call with you and your team. I think that you should create an access pack. If everyone went to Gofield and saw that if they bought 10 cases, that they would get into a small group that gets an hour with Jerry on like this in, in a group to ask Q&A, I think you can get, I think, you see where I'm going, my man? Yeah, I see access, where you want. access to you is so valuable you could go live like this digitally and have 500 people on there. They all bought 10 cases, 25 cases, a case a month. I think if you layer access because of who you are, I mean, there's a ton of people watching right now who weren't gonna buy the energy drink, even though they love you, but the fact to be in part of a small group, getting a Q&A with you, right. access to you, now they buy the 10 cases. A lot of them will then, you know, cause that's a lot for them, will give out the product to their friends, which will create word of mouth. So I think there's a real leverage of access. Yeah, and that's why I want you on my team, man. You know, with okay. all that knowledge and that experience, you know. Well, listen, and, this, and is, full, this be, is full circle. I lived my and, whole life wishing that you were on my team. <laughs> you could be my <laughs> Joe Montana. Brother. Let's go. Listen, <laughs> let's get connected after this. We'll have a real call. Get your team together. Let's get my admins together. and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get a real meeting down. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to send you something out. It's a gift, you know, because you. you're a big influencer, man, and you're a GOAT. You're the greatest Thank of you, all man. time. And we're going to send you a case of uh, GOAT fuel out, okay? I love it. Uh, hey, Dustin, man, let's, put, love. let's put the URL here for everybody to have it because I want to make sure everybody does it. Did, did you catch that, Dustin, or do you need the URL? Uh, what What is the URL again? GOAT fuel. How, how do you spell it, Jerry? I just want to make sure he's catching it. It's G-O-A-T-F-U-E-L dot com. www.gofield.com and are just, you know, at Gofield. I love it. Jerry, this was such a fun surprise. I appreciate you, my man. It's a real, real honor. You got got me up. I'm ready uh, to work out. I'm good to go. (laughs) 
You see that right there? I got I got my goat feet. Let's go. Board, Let's go. Take care, love. All right, buddy. We'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you. That was amazing. That fired me up. That man is, you know, if you're 44 like me, like you don't even understand what that guy did. Like just the, the, the sheer separation from him being the best receiver in football to the second best was enormous. Uh, goat fuel in the building. Um, there, uh, there it is. Uh, anyway, um, let's keep this moving. Wow. Wow, what's going on? What's up, Simon? How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm quite well. I'm quite well. You, always, just wear, like... you always wear that red hat? Every time I see you, I, I <laughs> in content, well, I see that. Is that your sort of. thing? Nice. Look at this. I, I, used to, I used to have a red hair, and mm. I had to shave that off about like a month ago because of like a stupid uh, YouTube challenge. And I, uh, I, I was bald like a month ago. Now I have a little bit of my hair back, but I'm not sure if I want to dye it back to red because, uh, I don't know, I kind of feel like not having red hair, but then I'm like, ah, it's branding. I listen <laughs> to you a lot. Branding is important. So I think a red hat is pretty cool. Um, but, but man, like, what is this world? You were just on the phone with, like, <laughs> it's so crazy. I don't know. It's just really crazy. But, um, yeah, um, I have a couple of uh, uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, please. Sir. Um, so you say, uh, like you say all the time, that um, it's really important to you know block out any of the of the noise, really, like to not listen to, to people giving you credits, not to listen to people who hate you and all that. Which is yeah, or like, or or as we continue to mature through the process, mm -hmm. t taking it with a grain of salt. You know, one of the things I worry about when I say things like "don't listen to anybody" mm -hmm. is then people become audacious and are tone deaf. Mm -hmm. So it's what I what I mean by that is like, look, don't get too high, don't get too low. When you hear information, have the humility to admit you're wrong. Have have the you know feel nice. I, you know, I almost don't want mm -hmm. people. You know, when Jerry Rice says to you, "You're the motherfucking goat." You know, I I, I need to take a hundredth of a second to feel nice about that, especially yeah, sure. the especially the twelve year old me. But the truth is, when he just said that, I you know it's a hundredth of a second of like that's so cool. That it, but then you just kind of move on and you remind yourself, yeah. But you know, I have shortcomings. You know, I'm just a man. And then, and the yeah, same token, right. that 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 allows you to also, when somebody says you're a snake oil salesman or you're a piece of shit, mm -hmm. you can be you can be compassionate to why they say that. They may not like the bravado of red hair, but they don't really know you. So it's yeah. yes, I do say tune out, but that doesn't mean be tone deaf. And that's a little clarity on that. Okay, yeah, that actually, I think that answers it pretty well because I always thought like, isn't it like. A resource that you can use to, you know, when, when you get the, high, when you get the numbers, and stuff, like it pumps you the fuck up, and you're like, uh, 100%. oh man, I'm gonna go, and then the next content piece that I'm gonna create is gonna be like, it has a different energy and all that. It's so a, uh, it's, it's like a resource. Yes, it's like a, it's like a, it's like ice cream. It, you know, yeah. everything in moderation. Like, yeah. I, you know, when people are like, you can't have that. That gets a little crazy. It's kind of like the way parents are with alcohol. If you look at the countries where alcohol is you know, is demonized and is yeah. pushed very as like a negative. You see a lot of kids when they get to 18 or 21 or whatever it may be, really struggle with their relationship with alcohol. If you look at cultures where alcohol is not demonized, mm. those kids have a much better relationship with alcohol through their whole life. And I, so I think one of the things that I don't want to do is I don't want to let other people's opinions have too much, too much weight, whether it's yeah. pro or con, because then you'll have a better relationship with it. Yeah, and a better uh, relationship with yourself, I think. I think, uh, like, the one thing that where, where I notice where I need to make my cut is, uh, like, my self-worth needs to be independent of everything. Like, Correct. Uh, it's not, like, Correct. it's just the, the worst thing is when you define yourself over Correct. numbers or, or any sort Correct. of, like, achievement. Because it's all just work, basically. Um, and like you just said, uh, the human itself needs to stay, you know, clean. Like, you're just a human. You're not going to be any more than human. You're never going to be, like, a superhuman or something. But uh, you're also not a piece of shit when your numbers go down or something like that. So, uh, and, to, and and you know why? Mm. That that is why the person that just said Russia has a massive drinking problem. There's an overlay on that, which is just general depression of the ecosystem they live in. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, um, yeah. what's important about that is Simon mean, is that if you're really passionate about the process. Yeah. All of a sudden, the results don't carry the weight. The fact that you're doing it carries the weight. Yeah, and and there there's like that place of authenticity. It's so important that you just need to do what you like. Really, like you you need to be 100 percent honest to yourself. I feel like 
and if, if, you, if you start doing shit to uh, you know get results and it's always gonna kind always, of result in, it's always gonna in fail shit. it's always yeah. it's always gonna fail which is why you know it's which is all these different themes no different than that proper gentleman who said you're wrong gary russia has a problem he's right about that but then i overlaid but there's another variable same to this talk which is mm -hmm. all these variables you know, about loving the process versus the results lets you not worry about numbers or accolades, cheering or booing. Yeah. And then, and then if you layer another thing on top of it, <laughs> what, this is why I'm spending almost all my time of how in the world are we going to make happiness the win, not mm -hmm. fame and money? Like ha truly, how are we going to make that happen? And what's yeah. a struggle for me is I am most happy when I'm buying and selling. Like, garage selling, sports cards. Mm -hmm. I'm my most happy as a businessman and I happen to be a good businessman. So I'm not gonna be in a place where I'm going to not not have money. So my voice on happiness over money mm -hmm. is gonna be blurry because the one thing that made me happy was actually something that made money. But if I had a little- So you're talking about the process being and buying and selling, right? Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. yes, that's why, I don't know if you've ever seen my garage sale videos. It's why, yeah, I'm, of course, so, it's why I'm so happy in those yeah. moments. Like waking up at 6 a.m. to go buy something for three. I mean, I was up at two o'clock in the morning the other night buying 500 Tim Hardaway rookie cards for 80, <laughs> 80 cents a piece with the hope that it's gonna be worth $3 in a year because basketball cards are going up. Mm -hmm. And it made me so happy. I was up at two o'clock in the morning doing it. Cool. That's awesome. So I'm a merchant. I'm a, you know, I'm a tchotchke guy. I'm a, you know, I would have been a trader if I was 500 years ago. I would have been the person that went in the woods, found a rock and was beautiful, convinced the person that was, that had sheep, that it was a beautiful rock. I got the sheep, feed my family. It's, that's my DNA. But musicians, artists, parents, teachers, we need more people to talk about loving what they do. Like we need a, we need a, we need a famous, that's famous so social media teacher who's so fucking happy, who she or he makes 53,000 a year and inspires an entire generation to say, yeah. oh, that's it, that happiness in the eye, not the 53K because, oh, by the way, 53K knows how to manage their money, lives in a very lovely home, mm -hmm. you know, pays their mortgage, you know, saves up for a Disney trip. Each like, There's so much happiness out there that is not being heralded and what we herald is business success, uh, you know, fame, success, which is fine and understandable. But if we just balance that with heralding people mm. that are happy, not tearing down everybody, not cancel culture, but but positivity of people that are happy. Yeah. If you're watching right now and you're genuinely happy, please make a video of like, I'm happy. I make 63,000 a year being a clerk. I make 104,000. Like, let's, Let's tell the world how many people are happy that aren't millionaires, and then shit will get very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a really good point. I think um, like the, where the main problem lays is like we just said it is that people seek definition in uh, success that is metric, metricable and stuff and measurable. But um, like I think you need to get to the we need to get to the core of like why people are. Uh, in the base so unhappy and, and even have that base thought of like, I'm not good, so I need to define myself over something like numbers or something like that. That's such a great point. Like I think I think this gets into self-esteem and insecurity. This is why parenting became a content pillar for me. Like, Yeah, there's there's parenting is huge. Parenting is like the biggest thing. I feel like uh, just like the, in the last months, I have, I've done so much like working up of like uh, trauma and shit that uh, um, is based on like childhood stuff. And uh, I feel like that's basically every like all the reason for all the um, you know pressure that I put on myself in the last years of uh, my career. Yeah, and like, I, I've, I've been in that place where I find myself over numbers and stuff. I was yeah. fucking depressed why, when, I, when it went why, down and stuff. Why? Yeah. Why are these artists doing it that started after me? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. if, if you look, if you look at the two prior comments that were below, one gentleman was, or a per, or woman, I couldn't tell by the name, is unhappy making 26K. The next gentleman, the one who made the point about Russia, MMA, he's thrilled at 30K, right? Mm. Natasha's talking about fixing the sink. You know, here's Malcolm, he's thrilled at under 50K. That's a big, Malcolm Dash can do a lot more for the world in a lot of ways than I can at this point in my life. If I was making content when I was 23, 24, 25, making you know 32K, 40K, I would have crushed because there's so much more there. Yeah. Like, like we need to we need to attack this. Yeah, I, I think it's that, awesome. And by the way, that doesn't mean there isn't issues with like separation of wealth. There's things we have to change. 
Mm. But we but we have to also we also have to while we're tearing down things that aren't working, we desperately have to build up things that are working. And Malcolm fucking Dash is working. <laughs> like this man, literally, that's a big fucking deal. Malcolm, please make content why you're happy. Please. Anyway, 100%. I appreciate you, bro. You're on your way. Like where your mindset is right now is exactly right. Thank you, man. Like uh, honestly, I I cannot like I cannot really put in words how much of an impact like all you uh, all you and you all of your content had like the last two or three years. I don't know. Like it started resonating with me more and more, and in like by now I'm like at the point where I'm like I, every single video that I see, I'm like yeah, like obviously like that's the only the only way that's logic, the only way that's that makes sense and stuff. Practical. And and yeah, and I feel like and I feel it's still so like so much the opposite of what everyone else in the world basically thinks is right. So I feel like, man, we need to wake the people up. So yeah, awesome. good on you, man. Keep I going. I wish you well. I will, Thank Simon. You. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Look at this rock. We're rich. It's true, Brandon. Like, like I, I'm actually genuinely curious if I crack and just become a garage sailor and baseball card dealer. I don't think it's impossible. I think, you know, I enjoy too many other things I'm doing, but I don't know, man. Anyway. Let's keep it going. Whoa! Yo, what's up, we got, the, we got the whole crew. We got the Momo whole crew. Shaq, what's good? Good? Momo Shaq, what's up, man? Thank you so much for having us, dude. I think uh, I want to start off by just saying, you know, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for for doing what you do, right? In a world where we are constantly being told how to act or you know how to be a certain way, you're preaching the the opposite, right? There's strength in who we are. And we got to use that to our power. So thank you so much, man. You're welcome. That's a, a big time of like who Momo Shack is and why we do certain things. Um, also, where, is, we, where, where is Momo Shack? So we're, we're based out of uh, Dallas, Texas. I love it. Also, a big shout out to Zane, man. We go way, way, way back. 2015. Um, I don't know if you know this, but he was the freshman orientation lead when I was first getting into college. So I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. Yeah, man. He's a, he's a huge supporter. So love that guy. It's awesome. What yeah. can I answer for you? Sure. So before we get to the question real quick, I just want to provide a bit of context, right? So in this call right now, we're representing three different countries. So I'm from Nepal. My name is Lee Zin. This is my mom, Chef Minu, head chef. Chef Minu. Yeah, we're both from Nepal. And then I'm Thang. I'm from Vietnam. And I'm Daniel from Mexico. Yeah, so we rep that immigrant life like Love hard, that. right? Like we really vibe with it. And I think growing up here, the biggest thing for us was the focus was you know, going through that societal path of, you know, go to college, get a good job. So that was our focus, right? So we went to college. That's where our stories connect. That's why I met these guys. And then I happened to graduate just a semester uh, earlier than them. So Make your mama chef proud. Exactly, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's big. And then uh, got the corporate job, right? Made it to corporate. And, you know, as I was going through the daily motions of learning and things like that, I think some something in me clicked and I was like, oh, I thought I made it, but I don't quite feel it yet, right? So I would relay the same message to these guys and we would like huddle up, brainstorm, come up with ideas. Fast forward to December, December, 2017, you know, we found your content and then we just decided to execute by no means. Do we know what we're doing or did we know what we're doing? Know what we're doing at that time, but nobody we did it. Exactly. And nobody we're knows. The, only, the only reason I'm further along in some ways is because I started doing it at six. The only reason, you know, at 44, I can have this kind of entrepreneurial juice is I was, unlike, you know, you delivered for your mom. I kind of didn't. I did, but I didn't for school because I went completely, which is crazy in hindsight, but I was, I've been a businessman now for 38 years for real. Like it's all I've ever thought about. And so I have so many reps. But at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I mean, I was making mistakes when I was 17. I was making, I made a mistake last week. Me and AJ were talking yesterday about major mistakes we're both making right now. Nobody, Nobody knows, knows what they're doing in the beginning. That's the best part of doing instead of learning. Teaching and watch, watching me or going to business school is great, but it, it's zero compared to living it. Zero. Absolutely. Experience is the best teacher. Nah, we feel that. Um, so yeah, 2017, we started off as a pop-up brand. So going direct to consumers, like you were talking about with Jerry earlier. Um, and then with COVID naturally happening, right, we had to find a way to pivot. So now we're doing package Momo. So if you, if you check out our IG, you'll see the little bag and you know, we're, we're doing pickup orders with customers. Are you shipping? Doing... Not yet. No, we're just. Can you? Up... Uh, or does, do to... you lose too much in the shipping process? We're going to lose too much just because it's frozen goods, right? 
I have an idea. I've been sitting on this idea. I'm going to share it with you. I think that you, do you feel like your recipe is a secret in any way or no? Absolutely. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out how people can send deconstruction boxes. So like, I love this idea that I have a good feeling that thousands of people right now would literally buy a deconstructing, deconstructed dumpling box from you that then every Friday night from six to 9 p.m., you know, Eastern, which would catch everybody kind of, you're doing live cooking with Mama Chef with you three characters and people are actually making dumplings along with you. Now, the fun part is you're like, look, this is gonna be you. These aren't official Momos because we have a little secret. Mama, show, do the secret that, you know, like let's not show her right now. You like move it away. All right, Mama's doing the secret stuff. All right, now we're back. I, I think there's a way for you to build a brand that isn't directly selling what you sell, but all of a sudden I've just taken you to a national brand instead of a local brand and I think you could actually sell a shitload of fucking maker packs. I think that's a big idea and I think for a lot of people out there that don't have some secret to the ingredients, it's a huge idea. Thoughts? Thoughts? No, absolutely. I mean, on the whiteboard here, we actually have that written down as one of the next things that we wanted to tackle, which is like DIY. Move, move, move that idea to the top of that fucking whiteboard. For sure. Thank you, man. Yeah. And then I think like just go piggybacking off of that, our question was going to be like knowing what you know now, right? Let's say you're the CEO of Momo Shack. What are some like tactical immediate things that you would focus on? And what are some, you know, macro level uh, vision things that you would focus on in the next five to 10 years to make that a na nationwide brand? I would decide if I want to do franchising or if I want to own. That's number one. You have to make that decision in your game. Number and, and by the way, there's no right decision. That's just, you need to be self-aware and figure out yourselves. Number two, I would create the deconstructing dumplings pack and sell it to everybody in the country. I really am hot on this. I think local brands can go national when they don't think they can. Somebody makes ice cream, ship out ice cream makers and do videos with people at night making ice cream. It won't be exactly your ice cream, but your brand's gonna get huge. If you're, you know, if you're a winery, and you're small, and you're in Texas, for example, which is not an emerging wine region, create wine making kits. That, that's months of content, because that shit sits in the ground, in the, in the garage, excuse me. I'm very hot on that. And then the, the other thing I would do is immediately become a media company. You're a media company that happens to sell dumplings. And what no, I mean by that is, when I see this foursome, this is incredible inspiration for not only immigrants, for not only brown people, for white people, for you know, for black people, for for all types. And I think a podcast or a documenting, you know, either a vlog, you know, and I know you know this. I say this all the time. Watch what I do, not what I say. The answer to your questions are in my own behavior. You know, this is why I want like to me, the reason to watch me, at some point the concept of what I'm talking about is gonna click, whether it's the first time you hear me or a year or two later and you start off not liking me, but then it clicked. It will, because it's it's way bigger than me. I just happen to message it. Um, the, the bigger reason I think people should follow me is they should do what I'm doing. I think you should do a coffee show every morning with your small little group named after, same concept as Tea with Gary Vee. After three months of it, all of a sudden people are coming to you buy, to buy coffee in the mornings and dumplings at night. Now you've become a restaurant that has multiple times of the day period. You could become the number one coffee player in your local area because you did a coffee show and you talk about testing. The whole show is a hundred days of you trying different coffee beans that you bought and you're doing Q&A and just talking about Dallas culture, immigrant culture, the Mavericks, I don't give a fuck, right? And then all of a sudden people know you as the coffee person even though you're a Momo Shack and all of a sudden now you're selling coffee and now and now the local news wants to cover you because like, get this story, a dumpling shop is now beating out Starbucks in Dallas. Let's talk, you see where I'm going? Yeah, the absolutely. Fucking strategy. Strategy. And yeah, that's huge, absolutely. I think we'll, we'll hop on that ASAP. Yeah, I agree. Awesome, awesome. Good, luck. good luck. Cool. Everybody, Everybody follow the chat. Mumble shot. Hey, one well, last Mumble question, Yes, sir, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, so I know it's kind of crazy right now due to COVID, so like offices are closed, but man, we would love to do a catering event Done. at VaynerMedia. Stop, stop. Awesome. Yeah. 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 20, 20, 2021, 
I'll, I'll make, make sure, sure I'm in this. And what, what, I gotta figure out how not to like pick favorites. I mean, it's probably gotta be New York, but I might wanna do it in LA. Let me give you some thought, or maybe we'll do both and then we'll do like a whole, and I'll make sure it's part of my weekly vlog to give you tons of exposure because you're doing that nice thing. I wanna return tenfold, so we'll lock it in. You'll work with Zane, we'll, we'll get, get that done. done. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Gary, we love you. But, but, if you don't, but if you don't bring mama, you're not coming. She's coming, she's coming. First, first, first class, yeah. Yeah. See, ya. See ya. All right, let's keep rocking it. Man, there's just something about the energy of the show. Oh, hi. I've been documenting my starting or about to talk with Gary Vee on TikTok. So. I love it, Laura. And hi, baby E. How are you? Good. Yeah. Good. We added two silent E's to the end of his name in your honor. You were very sweet. <laughs> we, we got some swag on today. We got to actually, this is a fun story. This is the first piece of baby clothing that I ever bought. And we actually got it like two years before we even had him and it happens it to say? fit right now when we talk so it's kind of cool what's it say it's it's the hustler one i love it you're We're very so sweet welcome. i see it i see it you're so <laughs> sweet i'm so so honored what can i answer for you yeah well first i wanted to say a particular a specific thank you that i've really noticed i haven't heard someone call you out on and that is you always give both genders in your examples when you're talking about the next ceo the next app developer or whatever and for me, I'm, I'm similar to you. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and every fucking textbook had examples of only men, only white men. And it's easy to grow up thinking, gosh, I guess women and people of color didn't do anything. So I really, I noticed that from you, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, my pleasure. So in preparing for this, I've been listening over and over to two specific T uh, segments that I kind of wanted to see how you could maybe help me apply to a bit of a variation that I want to take now with my business because of some of my priorities have really changed now that I'm a new mommy. So Tom Levine, you talked with him. He's a good fiction writer. So you gave him the advice, yeah. to do like a $5 a month subscription access, helping people with fiction writing. And then Melissa from it fits bars. You had the idea of access. Yeah. Access, but you get like, and, a the bar. ironically, it's what I just told Jerry Rice to do as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. So, so my background is I was a big nerd in school. I totally bought in, unlike you, I bought into the whole academics as a recipe. So I was just a nerd, went to the best college I could. And at 20, I studied abroad in Germany for a year and read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And those two things just blew up my world because I was like, oh, I didn't even know you could start businesses and that mm -hmm. thing didn't even occur to me. And then traveling the world and all that. So in my 20s, I couldn't figure out business because the internet wasn't like it is now. And I tried a bunch of stuff, funny failure stories that went nowhere. Uh, and I ended up going back to what I know, which is education. So I was a teacher. So I taught high school awesome. math and psychology for about five years. And then- and, psych and psychology? Yeah, yeah. That's so my, cool. my undergrad, I started as an English major and switched to psychology in undergrad. Cool. Yeah. And then at age 30, so it's nine years ago, I was like, okay, that's it. I love teaching. I was super happy even though I wasn't making a ton because I was traveling the world and I'm smart with money, just like you said earlier. Um, but I just had this burning desire, like I have to figure out this entrepreneur thing. So it's been a long journey these nine years. I had a lot of things to learn and a lot of things to unlearn. Mm -hmm. I used to edit out contractions from people's emails on my team because I was like, that's not official. And now I put right. them in, you want this to be conversational. Right. I can't even spell, so I get yeah, it. Totally. So, so I really started kind of hitting my stride and figure, figuring my sort of niche in 2016, started a podcast called Copy That Pops. So it's like writing that stands out for business, yep. psychology tips and hacks. Yep. And then at the end of the year, I had three people I really respect tell me, why don't you write a book? Like we've seen you have a writing as your superpower for nonfiction. So why don't you have a book? And I was like, oh, I thought I had to wait for permission and decided to like, fuck that. Let's just go. So I wrote self-published a book that's over 360 pages in 30 days <laughs> and figured out how to hit number one bestseller in categories on Amazon. And after that, people started asking me for help to do the same thing as to writing and self-publishing and doing fun launches and then using their books to get more speaking gigs and more podcast interviews and all those stuff. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, so specifically nonfiction, helping entrepreneurs to write and self-publish books. But now that I've got this guy, I'm even more passionate about what goes in kids' heads and kids' worlds. Makes sense. So specifically clothing, because when I was um, 
doing like baby showers planning, I would not reveal the gender because I didn't want an explosion of pink or blue. And it seems like with kids clothes, like that's all there is, is like super gender stereotypes, which drives me absolutely insane. And I want there to be more like business related fun stuff too, kind of like, like what you what you did. So I'm really passionate about that. And then also kids books. I think there need to be more diversity, inclusiveness, multi- here, here, Here's the best part of the internet and, and just the world we live in. You, everything you're passionate about, you can execute. No, totally. I'm 100% going to. My question more for you is like, how could I uniquely structure that maybe as a combination of maybe like kids clothes, kids books that are business related and diverse and and maybe an access model? I'm, I'm kind of trying I to- I see. So you're, it, the more, I think what I'm hearing is more just a question of like, what from the beginning of it will give it a more likelihood of success? Yeah, and it's like, so where I've made most of my money in the past few years is high-end private clients. Good. I don't want to do that anymore just because he yeah. oh my, takes up your time, of course. Him. So I, I'm kind of trying to explore more products and group access. I got it, models. I got it. Yeah. I, I think, look, here's the good news. I think you're on it. I think I think the reason I keep bringing up group access is because I think it's a big business idea. I think if you start a infrastructure around clothes and books and access to you for, you know, three hours a week, you know, Monday, eight to nine, you, you're going to, obviously his schedule is going to change as he goes to, through. So you'll have to figure out what works for you. And it might be just one hour, you know, nine to 10 on Friday PM, you know, one hour. But yes, I think starting a business that says, this is my business. It is going to be diverse and inclusive, whether it's kids with disability, whether it's black, brown, it, you know, that's amazing. And obviously very much on the consciousness uh, of, of at least half the country and, and many more than that for that matter. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of business opportunity there. And I think access is gonna be the biggest, uh, you know, lever. I do believe that access is the emerging leverage point. And so I think it's a book and close club with the person that is the person. Uh, you know, like imagine the first time Harry Potter came out, if she was available, obviously she's in the news a lot now for a lot of different things, but like, you know, like people want access. Mm -hmm. period, end of story. If my next book that I write comes with, if you buy this book, there's a unique barcode on the back of every book and you get to be part of a closed, <laughs> see, he like, see, baby E likes this idea. You know, and so I, I yes, I, I actually think you have it figured out. I think figure, reverse engineer how much time you're willing to give and then you'll be able to amortize. You're not gonna be able to have high-end clients paying you a thousand. You're gonna have a lot more people paying you 50, but the good news is it's scalable. The high-end clients, whether you're charging them a thousand or 500,000, you can only have so many. You're just one woman. A super woman, but like one woman. I think that if you go to the $50 access instead of the thousand dollar, I don't know your numbers, and it might be $10, it might be 500, but I think you'll get to that income level and it's gonna cost you an hour. Right instead of costing you all that other time. I, and I think you set it up that way from day one. It's almost like Costco. From day one, you can buy my book, you can buy my shirt, but, <laughs> he's so damn cute, but, but there's this really epic thing that gives you this access and I think you'll see 80%, 50%, 30% sign up for that and that will be the trigger. And what do you think on pricing? Like with its fits bars, it was like seventy two. Then you're like, no, ninety nine for a twelve pack plus access. What do you, do you have any ideas on that? I do, I do. I think that I think that there, you know, a couple things. If you go the route of selling the book or close without the access, you may have a lot of people that then say you're not worth the extra hundred bucks. So you've got to first make a decision of, do I build a model where, you know, you only. I love this. You got Gary V, Baby E, and a fucking B. I mean, this is just like perfect. You are his favorite. I love it. <laughs> and so, yeah, like you. I love it. So I really, I really think that you need to decide if you're gonna sell the books or clothes outside of access. I would actually recommend not. Hmm. Because then you can bundle the fee. So now all of a sudden, the books are $55 when everybody knows the book is really 15. The, you know, but what comes along with that book is you're part of this group and we're here every single week, 52 weeks a year for these two hours live, here's the passcode. And it, you know, and I think you should sell it yourself this way you have the email 
so that you can give them access, right? You don't have to worry about the code that I just talked about. Yeah. That's how I would structure it. As far as pricing, I think people would absolutely, I think $100 a month is an incredible price point. So if they get a book and a piece of clothing that normally would have been 40 bucks and that you now are making that extra 60 and you can make that, you know, think about that. You get, if that's $60 and you get a thousand people, if you grind hard for a couple of years, now you've got $60,000 in monthly recurring revenue Great. that you're probably making, tw- you're probably making, you know, 20,000 in profit because you got to make the book and the, you know, what have you. And I think you've got something. And then you can tier it, right? Because somebody could buy a month for 140, somebody could buy six months for a buck 10 or a year for a, a 99. Mm-hmm. You're all in for 50 on your hard goods on the book and the clothes per month. Maybe they get a book and a piece of clothing, but what the real game is, is it's this access thing. And then you're putting out content constantly because then people are buying into your access. I mean, they, I mean, it's, this is never gonna be the route I'm gonna go because I'm making my economics differently, but I don't begrudge it when somebody's bringing value with access. And I have a funny feeling if I ask people how much they would pay for a month for a bottle of wine with me and having that small access, it, it would be high. Leave in the comments if what your number would be and don't make it up. It's just good data for everybody who's watching right now for them to think about how they can do it. So don't say a thousand or whatever, but put what you would actually put. So that's how I see it, Laura. And would you take like those hour sessions and chop them up and do like your 64 or your 200 whatever pieces of content from those? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Because the it's the same thing I do with, you know, the 4Ds. It's a $12,000 VaynerMedia product, but I put it out, right? So like, yes, I would. 4Ds are my favorite stuff. Thank you. To with Gary Vee because you can just like you're a fly on the wall listening to you. Yeah, thinking. you're learning. Yeah, and 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 the same thing. There I have time. Here I have time, and I think that's why it's working. So awesome. Like bye, Laura. Bye, bye, baby. E. Little request. Could, Real quick, go ahead. If we get out to New York, could we come by for the day? Doc, yes. Everything. Share everything. Yes. Write a book about it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Talk to Dustin or Zane or whoever set you up here. Okay. Well. Thank you, Gary. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was fun. Let's keep it moving. London Martinez, 1200. I might have to do that. It's 14,000 a year. <gasps> Hi. Hi, Gary. Oh How goodness. are you? I'm so excited that I'm here. Wow. Thank you. What's your name? Oh my God, I'm Donne. 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 How are you? I'm so nice well. It's so nice to see you, Donne. You too. I just want to say thank you so much. You have been like amazing. I love the way you are with people and how much you give and how much you offer. And it's just, oh my God, I'm going to cry. Thank <laughs> you, Donna. so awesome. Where do you um, live? I live in Charlotte, but I'm a New Yorker originally. So I've been here for quite a long time. So I wanted to get on here and talk to you because, well, a couple of things. So I'm one of those people that I was listening. I listened to you every single day throughout the whole lockdown, every single day. And I discovered you probably this year, I think. And so just to give a little backstory, when I first moved here, you know, when living in New York, it was all about the more you know, the more diversified you are, the better candidate you are for a job or anything you want to do. Moving to the South, I felt like I started to get put into a box that I had to focus on one thing. The problem is, is I am so multifaceted that I turn into some time like this crazy professor obsessed that I will get a thousand different ideas at one time. That's good. So when I moved to here, I start, I had a graphic design business. I was a single parent and I had a child that was really sick. And so I started teaching yoga. I did everything I could. I, I started a graphic design business. I had, I was a mindfulness coach back then when there was no such thing as mindfulness. Now it's like a big deal. Um, I owned an herbal body care company where I created all the products myself from scratch. I formulated everything. And at that time, nobody really knew what handmade products were, herbal body care products were. So like, not like now, everybody's doing it. So I spent a lot of time educating people and at the end of the day, my products did pretty well, but I got really burnt. Yeah, of course. And that I happens. was making it, creating education. I was doing training programs. I mean, I just, I just got burnt out and I ran out of money and I had to go back to work to relieve my mind as well I as- totally understand. Money. And by the way, Donate, that, that's good. I just, I really hope you understand and I hope everybody on earth understands that's not an L. 
that's part of the process. Yeah. It's very important that you do not look at that as a loss. I mean that. It, well, thank it, you. It, it was it, money and it was hard. <laughs> it, in the micro, it was a loss. In the macro, it was a win because now at this still young of an age, and you know, I believe this shit, you and I are younger than we think. You, but I'm older, I'm 52. So when you, you just, say I have a lot of years, I feel like you, I don't have a lot do. of time. Look, first of all, you look fucking fantastic for Thank 52. You. Number two, you. number two, you just do. I, I'm just gonna play this out for, listen, and I, every time I say this, I always see somebody comment or they'll email me, what if she gets cancer? Yes, I understand things happen. I also right. understand it's extremely likely that we're talking about 38, 42 years with the way medicine right. is progressing. You know, that's a right. long fucking time, Donate. Like 38 years ago, you were 14. A yeah. lot of shit has happened since you were 14. Yeah. So when you start looking at, at that way, so anyway, nonetheless, I just really wanna make sure that that experience that you went through, it's a building block. Yes, it was a loss, but you didn't lose. And people need to understand that, but keep going. So, you know, going back to work has been hard for me because I tend to get put in a box all the time. Um, even when I work for other co for companies, they see me as a fix it. I'm really good at fixing things and clearing out operations. And, you know, um, I'm in retail. And so I'm always going and I fix the stores and I make them profitable and make them run. And Love. I'm really usually ready to get out, but then I end up stuck there. So anyway, during this lockdown time, I listened to you. I started a YouTube channel. I, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere. And I have to tell you that even back then, I started a YouTube channel back then when YouTube was not a big thing. I started, I had blogs still sitting out there. But somewhere along the line, something that happens, I get all this inspiration with a thousand ideas. You know, I love beauty and then I love mindfulness and then I really believe that one of my purposes is to help the world see things from different perspectives. So George Floyd happened. I started doing videos on George Floyd and how we could start talking about race and how we can heal as a world. I've done videos on video, uh, beauty and I, and I get all these different ideas and they feel like they're in so many different paths, but I can't figure out how to all bring it all together. You, you don't bring them all together. They say to do one, well, on YouTube, like they, I keep watching, I watch a lot of videos on what to do and they say, you know, you should have one thing that you're talking no, about. No, they're saying and I don't that. know how to do it all. Donate. And then I get donate, tired. Donate. They're telling you how to win on YouTube. Okay. I'm trying to have you win in life. Okay. Like, like stick with me here. Like when, when you go through this process, the, you, when you say how to bring them all together, you don't bring them all together. You're the all together. Right. You're the part that brings it all together. Right. Like you the human, you the unique human is how it all comes together. The bigger question is what- It's weird that I might talk about a face cream one day. I'm talking, talking about baseball about cards out here. Don't I, I'm talking about sports cards out here. I've got <laughs> a billionaire companies reaching out to me saying, are you okay? Literally I had venture capitalists reaching out to me saying, are you okay? When they saw me make videos of going garage sailing, they're like, are you okay? I'm like, right. the fuck are you talking? Of course I'm okay. The, like, right. like, 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 I'm talking about the Jets. I'm talking about social media. I'm talking about sports cards. I'm talking about wrestling. I'm talking about business, entrepreneurship, corporate life. I'm talking about parenting. I'm talking about TikTok. You're what brings it together. The bigger question is, when you are you worried that by doing so many different things that make you happy because you're wildly creative, because that's what it is, yep. that you're concerned that by not having some, but, but that doesn't allow you to maximize dollars that allows you to have stability, to be at peace, to be able to do it. Right, so that I can get right. out of my daytime thing. Yep. Like, so let's talk I, about it. I got it. Because even TikTok, like, honestly, Gary, TikTok, if I do something on TikTok that I'm talking, I don't really, no one really pays me attention. So here I'm 52, trying to learn all these dances, and I have don't like, dance. all these followers, but they're all men. Like, that's not getting <laughs> me anywhere. Listen. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's 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 definitely some baggage that comes along with being pretty. I get it. Listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Donate. Listen. I'm the same as you. What I have that has made it work 
is the ability to make one thing 80%, but go at it 110%, which gives me 20% to play. Vayner Media is my 80%. Right. Gary, beat Gary V, uh, sports cards, garage sailing, social media. That's, that's the 20%. I go hard at both, but I think what you need is to find your 80% thing. And, right. and in a world where there's a lot of things you can do, it's literally, literally rolling the dice or throwing a dart or flipping a coin. You have so many passions. I think that you need to really think about having one core main thing the steak, and then side dish everything else, but don't eliminate the side dishes because they're the things that allow you to focus on the main thing. My baseball card, sports card thing, my, my Gary V, all of that are the things that allow me to actually be a very good CEO for VaynerMedia because if I didn't have the side stuff, I wouldn't be able to be happy because I would burn out from VaynerMedia because my brain would want to do other things. I allow myself to do other things at what is perceived as the shortcoming of the 80%, but those other things allow me to be 110% on the 80. Does that make sense? Right. So I think you need to pick the sustainable thing, the thing that you- mean, You mean like a YouTube thing sustainable or a topic sustainable? A business sustainable. Oh, sustainable, yeah. Got it? You're yeah. asking me so you don't have to do the, you need to be able to get out and do your, you know, your thing at all times. You need to pick right. one thing that pays your bills enough right. to let that's you- That's what I'm trying to figure out. Still. I see. <laughs> and a, that's, that's what I want for you because once you are selling candles direct to consumer or start a, you know, an access business like I'm talking about, once you do that, you're gonna be then able to be a little bit more creative and play with social media and do other side things and talk about meditation or racial injustice. But you need the thing that is your oxygen, your well, your, you know, th that allows everything else to happen, but you're gonna need those other things to happen. The people that tell you to focus on one thing are wrong because you're wired to need the other stuff, like me. Yes, yes. But, but the part that you're missing right now, good news, we got 52 more years to drill this, <laughs> is I need you to build something that is sustainable as your one thing, but not cut off everything because then that's holding your breath and you're gonna eventually breathe and the whole thing's gonna break. So you need to build a sustainable thing, but cut, still do 20% of the side stuff, Right. but you've gotta figure out what that sustainable thing is. Right, that's what I'm trying to figure out because I was thinking I can maybe go back to making some products again, even if it's one thing, because I mean, full-time job, it's hard to make as many things as I did before. If I started with one or two things and then building it from there. What what has historically given you the most success? Sorry? Out of all the things you've ever done, what was the thing that maybe worked the best? Oh, at, at, on a solo level. Anything? On the soul level? On the solo. Really not love, soul. Not soul. Not love. No, like actual business success. What's the most successful thing you've done by your like as an entrepreneur versus as an executive? I think my um, herbal body care company did the most. Okay. And what burnt you out from that? What what and what ended up happening really there? I just is that first of all, when you're making stuff from home, manufacturing, I couldn't grow it enough. I didn't have the money, and yeah. I actually went got went back to school, got my MBA, thinking that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get <laughs> trying it. to get more education, so it was really trying to you need money in order to grow because you can only manufacture so much from your home. You know what I mean? But you could also start a business that does pre-selling. Yeah. You know, you could sell futures. A lot of people that don't have dollars don't realize the thing they have is their passion and their clout and a business model that takes the money before it comes in. If you, oh, came, okay. out, if you came out and said this soap is gonna be $25, but if you order it now, which comes in several months, it'll be 15. All of a sudden, you can take those dollars and you can manufacture more, you know, that way. That's a good idea. I think so. And and you're going to be at the mercy of how much people trust you. And right. obviously not everyone's going to trust you, but enough people are going to trust you to allow you to do that. Right. pre -selling. Okay. That's a good idea. Thank you. I have one more. I have, do have one more question. I have a, I have a client meeting in one minute. Okay. Pop. Can I take my videos and turn the video, the audio into a podcast? You think that's a good idea? Or do I need to have to you mean, podcast? You mean the thing that I do? Yeah. Yes, well, I think you could yeah. do it. <laughs> okay. All right, great. Oh, you froze. Thank you.
so much. I think he crashed again, but uh, yes. yeah. Just tell him thank you. Much love to him. Thank you so much for everything. No problem. You guys have a great day. You too. All right. Um, okay. Well, Gary's computer crashed again. So I guess I'll just end the show for him. <laughs> um, thank you everyone for watching. I'll read some of the comments. Thank you to people with a passion. Uh, it's going too fast, DJ Kingpin. Anyway, Gary's got to go to a meeting, so uh, I don't think he's going to make it back. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Please come and get back tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have the sports card episodes tomorrow. Um, what else? <laughs> Watch this. Oh, go follow Gary V TV on Twitter. And I'm going to play this promo so you can figure out what that is. And yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye bye. And the people that are going to win over the next five to seven years are going to be very comfortable in controlled fucking chaos. You don't love the process. This is dreams we're talking about. Dreams require sacrifice. All of your actions have to then map to it. Backpack, backpack, backpack. Nobody gives a shit about where you grew up. The whole game is scaling the unscalable. It's fucking hard work, it's being respectful, it's being a good person. Do that, that's just a good idea. It's there, the flip game's there. This house right here, there's $400 to be made. I stay in my lane, like real fucking tight. But you can't be crippled. Everybody here is judging themselves. You're looking at what's in front of you right now. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's fucking glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. Let me just say it one more time if you're confused what I just said. I say put your fucking flag on the ground of who the fuck you are. Whoever provides the most value always wins. You're entering the greatest five year window of your life. My only answer to me or anybody like is just like just try shit. Shut your business down and go work for an apparel company for three years. Nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. So you better get your speed up. You better work harder. You better work smarter. If you can't Google stuff, you're not gonna be able to do anything that I'm telling you to do. Gary TV, my new account. Check me out. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>